So vitamin D is a hormone that's made in your skin when you're exposed to sunlight, and you can also get it from your diet. And it is very important not only for your bone health, but also has a lot of other important health benefits for children, for example. Not only does it help them have stronger bones, improves muscle strength, but may reduce risk of infectious diseases, multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes later in life. For adults, it's really important. So for pregnant women, it potentially reduces risk of preeclampsia, one of the most serious complications of pregnancy, reduces their risk of requiring a cesarean section because vitamin D is very important for muscle function, which of course is important for birthing action. We also know that it reduces risk of cancers like colon, prostate, breast, as much as 50%, reduces risk of type 1 diabetes as well as type 2 diabetes in adults. Also, it reduces risk of infectious diseases and even heart disease and stroke. We know that when you're exposed to sunlight, not only do you make vitamin D in your skin, but it also turns out that you make beta endorphin, which is um, a compound that is actually made in your brain as well, and it's thought responsible for runner's high. So for people that feel well when they go outside in the sun, we think that part of the reason is because they're making beta endorphin and therefore making them feel better. So I recently wrote a book called The Vitamin D Solution, and there's an Australian edition. And in the back of the book, I actually have recommendations for any time of the year, anywhere in Australia, how long to be outside to get some safe sun exposure to make vitamin D. The problem is that there's a lot of misconception. You think that because the sun is shining and you're exposing your skin to sunlight that you're making vitamin D? Not true. It really depends upon the angle of the sun as it's hitting the earth. So in the early morning and late afternoon, even in the summertime in Australia, basically you cannot make any vitamin D until about 10 a.m. until about 2 to 3 p.m. And those are the times, of course, that the dermatologists tell you never to be exposed to direct sunlight. But it turns out that those early morning and late afternoon may actually even be worse for you because what you're doing is you're being exposed to UVA radiation, which penetrates deeply into your skin, potentially increasing your risk for melanoma and wrinkles, and it makes no vitamin D. In the wintertime, even in, say, in Melbourne, you can't make any vitamin D in your skin four months during the wintertime. And even if you lived in Brisbane um, in the, in the wintertime, you're probably only making 10 to 25% of what you would be making in the summertime. So the fact that the sun is shining doesn't necessarily mean that you're making a lot of vitamin D. It has to be at certain times of the day and maximized mainly in the late spring, summer, and early fall. Uh, it's a reasonable guideline to look at your shadow, and if your shadow is longer than your body length, then you're probably the angle is coming in so obliquely that you're not making any vitamin D. So if it's shorter, then you're probably making vitamin D. But it also depends upon the pollution. And so, for example, if you're living in a city that has a lot of air pollution, sometimes that happens in the summertime, uh, you won't make any vitamin D even if you're exposed to sunlight. The Institute of Medicine has come out with its guidelines in 2010, and their goal was for population-based recommendation. So they said that everybody had to be at least 50 nanomoles per liter. The Endocrine Society, which has over 11,000 members, um, held a group uh, together, uh, and I chaired that group called the Endocrine Practice Guidelines Committee, and we reviewed all the literature. And we concluded to get all the health benefits of vitamin D that your blood level should be greater than 75 nanomoles per liter. It turns out that there's essentially very few foods that naturally contain vitamin D. It's mainly oily fish like salmon, mackerel, herring. You'd have to eat it basically every day to get your vitamin D. Also cod liver oil, which of course nobody wants to really take. And then the only other natural source is mushrooms. And that's why we've now been studying mushrooms, because it's interesting that mushrooms have a huge capacity to make vitamin D if they're exposed to ultraviolet light. And the industry is now exposing mushrooms to ultraviolet light 
as a way of providing the consumer with a product in the produce section that contains vitamin D. We're doing studies uh, in mushrooms right now to understand how mushrooms make vitamin D and to see if they make vitamin D similar to the way a human would make vitamin D in their skin, and it turns out that they do it identically. Also, we're finding that mushrooms, because they have such a good content of vitamin D, that we're now doing a human clinical trial to determine the bioavailability of the vitamin D in the mushroom to be sure that, in fact, people can use it. So we're going to be doing a study where we're going to compare mushroom vitamin D with regular vitamin D um, in healthy adults and to see if we can raise the blood levels of the major circulating form of vitamin D, 25-hydroxy vitamin D, to the same extent. So when you make vitamin D in your skin, that vitamin D is called vitamin D3. What is made in mushrooms when they're exposed to sunlight or ultraviolet light is vitamin D2. And there's been some controversy suggesting that maybe vitamin D2 is less bioavailable or less able to raise the blood levels of 25-hydroxy vitamin D. So we did a study and we showed that when we gave healthy adults 1,000 international units of vitamin D2, and 1,000 international units of vitamin D3 were able to raise their blood levels identically. To be sure that vitamin D2 wasn't interacting with vitamin D3, we had a capsule that contained 500 units of vitamin D2 and 500 units of vitamin D3, and the blood levels rose exactly the same as adults that took 1,000 units of vitamin D3. Also, because, of course, vitamin D2 is in mushrooms, and so it's in a food product, we wanted to know whether or not if you put, say, vitamin D2 in a food, and in the United States, orange juice is now fortified with vitamin D. So we put vitamin D2 in orange juice to see if it would be bioavailable. And it turns out it's identical to being bioavailable to vitamin D3 in orange juice. So I'm pretty confident based on our work. And there's also work done in children showing that vitamin D2 is as effective as vitamin D3 in maintaining vitamin D status. Well, vitamin D deficiency is a worldwide health problem. Um, I was recently in India. 90% of doctors in Mumbai were vitamin D deficient. They estimate 50 to 80% of the adult population in India vitamin D deficient. More than 35% of children in New Delhi vitamin D deficient. Estimated in Canada, 50 to 100% of children and adults at risk for vitamin D deficiency. In the United States, children one to five years of age, 50% deficient or insufficient. Children six to 11 years of age, 70% deficient or insufficient. So it's a global problem. And the problem and the cause is people don't appreciate that sunlight has always been our major source of vitamin D. So it's really a three-step process. What you want to do is you want to get some sensible sun exposure in spring, summer, and fall. Like I do, I cycle and I garden and I play tennis. So I always wear some kind of protection on my face, but not on my arms and legs. Never get a sunburn. Think about your diet. So in, in some countries, they fortify dairy with vitamin D. It's a great source of calcium and vitamin D. Also, some countries are now beginning to expose mushrooms to ultraviolet light. It's a wonderful source of vitamin D. So these are good dietary sources of vitamin D. Also, oily fish can be a great source. But white fish is not. And the reason is that it's only the fat content in the fish that provides the vitamin D. And then finally, think about taking a supplement. That guarantees you that you will also be getting a good source of vitamin D. I personally, like most of my family members, take 2,000 units of vitamin D a day on top of my sensible sun exposure and getting vitamin D from my diet. And so as a result, you can really maintain healthy blood levels above 75 nanomoles per liter. And what I believe is that you'll get all of the health benefits of vitamin D.